Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. I uh, want to try a little something different today um, and give you sort of like a, uh, a mind map of sorts to help you maybe remember some uh, key signs and symptoms. And in this case, we're going to talk about uh, signs and symptoms when it comes to anaphylaxis. So I want to just take a look here and pull up the individual areas that you'll see and, and things for you to um, review when you're thinking about this type of uh, presentation. So first we have the skin, right? And the skin is really the first body's line of defense, right? When you talk about uh, invaders to the skin. So symptoms you're going to see with the skin are usually the first indications of somebody who might be in anaphylaxis. You know, you're talking about someone might be aware of feeling warm or or they might be aware of feeling, feeling flush or they're going to be itchy. Okay, that's another sign that's pretty early that's due to the vasodilation, right, and the capillary leaking that you're going to see. And the area around the eyes might be also affected as well. Talk about swelling eyes, red-looking eyes, swelling of the face or the tongue, also that angioedema, right, you might also see that as well. And that might, of course, contribute to things like airway compromising. And then edema or the swelling to the hands and the feet as well could also be part of something you might see when it comes to looking at a person's overall appearance and their skin. Okay? And then the histamine, right? You can get those the histamine that ends up being responsible and causing things like the hive, the uticaria that you're gonna see. Okay? Now some other complaints you might see, especially when we talk about respiratory, let me enlarge that for you. And the key one is the shortness of breath, right, the dyspnea, okay? Um, you know, this are kind of common complaints when it comes to respiratory symptoms, and you get that dyspnea, the tightness in the throat or the tightness in the chest even, uh, strider or the hoarseness uh, might be seen as well with these types of patients. And the signs and symptoms you're going to see are usually due to the upper airway swelling and the laryngeal, the epiglottic type um, areas, okay? So affected patients might report like feeling like a lump in their throat, okay, because of this, because of that swelling. The lower airway can uh, be involved also, and you get that bronchoconstriction going on, the increasing of, of, of secretions, right? And then what are you going to hear? You're going to hear the wheezing. You're going to hear the rails or the crackles going on. And, you know, it's not really that uncommon either for patients to be coughing a lot, okay, or even sneezing when you talk about respiratory uh, symptoms because it, the body's trying to get rid of the... Um, the, the, these fluids get rid of these these sensations by coughing and getting rid of these these symptoms okay okay so just you know keep this in mind okay but remember that these symptoms that we're talking about okay can progress slowly or they can progress very very quickly okay so you have to be ready you might only have a few minutes really to kind of stop this rapid progression, this life-threatening process that's going on with the patient's respiratory system. Now, what about cardiovascular? Another key area here, guys, right? Because these are the real serious complications of a person having a severe allergic reaction, having an anaphylaxis, okay? You know, you talk about things like the histamine and leukotrienes that, that work directly on the heart that decrease its contractility, but the resulting decrease in cardiac output that gets complicated by the vasodilation and increased capillary permeability, which ends up further decreasing the amount of fluid that gets returned to the heart. So as the cardiac output starts to decline, um, the perfusion for the patient is going to decrease, and this is going to lead to, um, you know, ischemia. It's going to lead to maybe even cardiac dysrhythmias. Okay, but 
as this fluid leaks out of the capillary, you got to talk about the person's, the, you know, the, the body, right? It's, it's a container and that extravascular and intravascular system. Well, in this case, the extravascular system ends up being left short on fluid. And in anaphylaxis, as much as 50% of this volume can be shifted to the extravascular space within 10 minutes of exposure to whatever they are uh, allergic to. Okay, so instead of responding normally, uh, the body normally does to, to this type of fluid loss, right? It, it, a lot of times it'll be constricting, right? The person loses blood. But in this case, the opposite happens, okay? They end up dilating. And this now complicates that already low uh, uh, vascular um, volume that is in the body and becomes totally inadequate for the patient. And then you get the hypotension, very, very key right? And the response to low blood pressure, the heart rate increases, giving you that tachycardia, all right? And this puts more stress on the, on the compromised um, uh, heart already. So think about that cardiovascular. There's only three bullet points here, but these are very key to situations that are going on with the patient. So you get that tachycardia, the flushed skin, the hypotension, all go along with, with uh, anaphylaxis. Now, Quickly on gastrointestinal symptoms, I want to open this up because this is stuff you're going to see, right? You're talking things like cramping, nausea, vomiting, bloating, distension, okay, all part of anaphylactic response, okay, especially when you have something that, let's say the patient ingested, you know, peanuts, bananas, uh, uh, shellfish, okay, this type of stuff is all, all more common with patients that have ingested something. Think of abdominal cramping, it's very common presentation. Okay, and we talk about diarrhea here, guys. We're talking about major diarrhea. We're talking about profuse, watery type of diarrhea that you're going to see. Now, finally, central nervous system, right? Patients can present with CNS symptoms, okay? And this is in response to decreased cerebral perfusion and the hypoxia they're getting from everything else we've been talking about. All right, symptoms can be, like it's right here it says, a headache, dizziness, confusion, anxiety, or restlessness, okay? The patient might even have that sort of impending doom sensation going on, okay? The patient that presents with these types of things is, is just like anything else. The patient knows what's going on. You've got to get your rapid assessment and your rapid treatment. So listen, guys, these signs and symptoms he is showing, right, they really just summarize what the patient might might be having you might see all some of them okay or part of these symptoms remember think of a patient that has anaphylaxis guys they might you know they have, they're having like three different types of of shock okay think of it as cardiogenic shock due to that decreased cardiac output think about the hypovolemic shock that's due to the fluid that's leaking into the tissues and think about neurogenic shock due to that inability of the blood vessel to constrict Okay, you got to use your assessment skills in this, guys. You got to identify the potential for anaphylaxis and you got to be aggressive. Take aggressive action, manage the patient to stop the process as soon as possible so you don't progress to major things like shortness of breath and dyspnea and the hypotension and tachycardia. Guys, I hope you can use these Monday minutes. I know a little bit longer than usual, but I want to get these in with the summer months upon us. We're talking about a lot of bee stings, people exposed to things like peanuts, eating a lot of shellfish, and might be exposed to it without even realizing it. So keep this in mind, guys, but this is some months upon us more than ever. Um, and, you know, use these signs and symptoms. Guys, if you've got some Monday Minutes of your own you want to share or have an idea for a Monday Minutes episode, be sure to send them over to me. It's jhoff at emsseo.com. Until next week, as always, Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours, stay safe.